Hello friends, so um, this is the one of our uh, uh, introductory classes, although I have already do when we were talking about introduction that uh, what is meant by uh, a sentence and that we are going to do sentence also, sentence of course, since we are going to write, uh, write and speak and read sentence and how a sentence is constructed is uh, extremely important for us to know. Now, in um, the introduction I had told you that I am going to cover sentence and also what goes into the making of a sentence. So, perhaps you will find that I am repeating here some of the things that I have already mentioned, but uh, um, please uh, 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 understand that these things are necessary for us because I would like to reinforce the importance of what is a sentence, how is a sentence constructed, what are the units of a sentence. So, therefore, even if you find some repetition, please do not get disturbed, it is uh, I am not being redundant, I am just trying to reinforce whatever is going on. So, throughout these classes you will find that what has been discussed once will emerge again, but this is something that we are just going to move from basic to more advanced and more complex. So, uh, today's class is all about sentence, what is a sentence? I am going to look at first uh, the basics of sentence, what is a simple com compound and complex sentence, it is very important for you to write uh, and speak and read English. So, perhaps some of you are already aware of it at school level, at high school or secondary school level you have done it, but I am just trying to repeat and I am trying to cater it uh, to your needs basically. We will also look at what is a phrase and what is a clause. Now, uh, what is a sentence? We already know what are parts of speech, you have noun and you have pronoun and you have verbs and adverbs, you have adjectives. Uh, right. So, prepositions, conjunctions, those are parts of speech. Sentence is a group of words and phrases, ok. So, sentence is not a word, it is a group of words and phrases and all those words, sentences and all that things that we have already done, they are, they, par, they become a part of sentence. So, we know what is a noun, we have seen various parts of speech. So, this is a uh, this is a, a group of all those words that are brought together that uh, is a sentence for us. Extremely important, a sentence should make sense. Now, we are talking about academic purposes, technical writing and not creative writing. So, therefore, we have to understand how a good sentence is constructed in creative writing and in more poetic kind of writing, you can take all sorts of liberties, not what we are doing here. Okay. Now, there are three types of sentences as we have already talked about. So, simple sentence. Let me give you an example. A is taller than B. Okay. How many verbs? How many verbs? Only one is, ok. This is the B type of verb is, am, was, were, right. The B type, we have done the auxiliaries, we have done models, we know what is B, what is have, ok. So, this is, we are talking about uh, a sentence and this is, there is only one kind of a, one verb here, the B type verb, ok. And taller is a comparative adjective, then again it is a degree of comparison, it is a word and then A and B can be replaced with anything, ok. Uh, Twin Towers is a tall building, ta taller than and you can look at X, Y, Z building, compare it. So, you can, these can be replaced by anything. Kutub Minar, a tall building and you can write anything taller than 
x, y, z building, whatever you want to. Main thing to remember here is a simple sentence has just one main verb or just one verb. Now, if I give you a little more challenging sentence uh, without the B form of it, let us say um, he studies engineering, you have just one verb in it studies, okay? it is a simple sentence. He is your noun, in the noun phrase it is a pronoun, studies becomes your verb, the main verb, engineering is a noun again. Hmm? Um, so, now they contain a single clause and a single verb. Now, I would like you to read this particular um, slide, please take a look at the slide and look at the passage. Look at the passage, I will read it out for you. You have to identify a simple sentence or if there are more than one, then let us talk about that also. I would like to understand if you understand what is basically a good simple sentence. Let me read it out for you. People in the watch business often say that the industry is very small. That is not because the multi-billion dollar a year watch sales market is insignificant, but rather that a few key stakeholders more or less control the business. To be a successful watch company in modern times, a company often needs help. Help with what you ask, that is a good question. Brands today are faced with a multitude of complex challenges, ranging from getting the right parts from suppliers to product distribution across many countries and expensive advertising initiatives. Identify the simple sentence, sentence which has one main verb, one main clause, one main verb. You will come across, you will find only one sentence, that is a good question, that is a good question. You have only one verb in it, hmm? you have one noun and then a noun phrase, a good question, that is a good question. So, that is your simple sentence. So, look at the variety of sentences used here, tremendous variety. Okay, you have complex, you have compound, you have clauses within comp, uh, clauses. So, a wonderfully constructed passage, just one simple sentence. Now, uh, coming to compound sentences, what are compound sentences? These contain two or more coordinate main clauses, but no subordinate clause. Subordinate clause as the name suggests depends on the main clause. Here you will find it stands on its own. I will give you an example soon. A compound sentence is a balanced sentence. The clauses are carefully arranged to support one another in structure and meaning. attributed to Caesar, I suppose. I came, I saw, I conquered. Three verbs, all clauses stand independently. Okay? It is not like the meaning will get affected with the, even if you remove any uh, other clauses. And three clauses each with an independent verb and not dependent on any other part of the sentence. I will give you um, more uh, uh, day to day kind of a sentence, milk boiled for a while and spilled all over the place. There are two sentences at work here, milk boiled for a while, comma and spilled all over the place. What is spilled? Milk spilled. So, just you have to insert one milk and you have another sentence, milk spilled over all the place. 
two sentences. My brother came back from the playground and he was bruised. My brother came back from the uh, playground, my brother was bruised. Two sentences of equal stature, equal structure. Look at this slide, please read on. I would like you to identify compound sentences. Let me read the passage for you. Again the same passage. People in the watch business often say that the industry is very small. That is not because the multi billion dollar a year watch sales market is insignificant, but rather that a few key stakeholders more or less control the business. To be a successful watch company in modern times, a company often needs help. Help with what you may ask, that is a good question. Brands today are faced with a multitude of complex challenges ranging from getting the right parts from suppliers to product distribution across many countries and expensive advertising initiatives. Now look at the last sentence, does not it strike you as a very complex complicated sentence, but if you try to break it into two parts, brands today are faced with a multitude of uh, uh, complex challenges ranging from getting the right parts from suppliers to product distribution across many countries. Today uh, countries full stop, brands need expensive advertising initiatives. Now, it gives an impression that it may be a good compound sentence, but where is the verb here? So, we do not have it, alright. Let us move on again. That is not because uh, first sentence, people in the watch business often say that the industry is very small. Can you have a compound sentence here? No. That is not because the multi billion dollar a year watch sales market is insignificant, but rather than a few key stakeholders more or less control the business. To be a successful watch company in modern times, a company often needs help. To be a successful watch company in modern times, let us try to break this one full stop. To be successful, a company often needs help. Yeah. Do you think this sentence can pass off as a compound sentence? Let us look at and break it again. To be a successful watch company in modern times. Now, if we break it, what happens to the first clause? Okay. So, again we do not have a very convincing compound sentence here. This is the way you need to break certain kinds of. So, you need to have some basic understanding what happens to the other clause. Even if I try to insert the uh, uh, noun phrase somewhere in the second half or first half, would the meaning be clear? We do not find it happening here. Now, this the passage that we have just done is a very good example of having several very strong complex sentences. And what is a complex sentence? Complex sentences contain subordinate clauses. Again, I will say for example, same thing that we have already done the uh, previous sentence, the milk boiled and spilled over although she was to told not to boil it. Now, although she was told not to boil it, the so this part does not make sentence or sense on its own. It meets the main part, main clause, the milk boiled and spilled over. Okay. So, the other half, it may have a verb of its own, but does not make much sense without uh, the first part. Look at the slide here, I am giving you some good examples of complex sentences. Please take a look. Having said that, a brand like Rolex is totally independent and often regarded as the most important name in luxury watch making. That is one sentence. 
Second sentence a little bit more complicated. Since the 1980s and the quartz crisis and then you have your uh, much discussed, much analyzed parenthesis that really changed the way traditional watch companies do business. What changed? Quartz crisis. Uh, I am just going to digress a bit. We have uh, parenthesis is something that we often use, but why do we use? We give extra information and even if you remove it, it may not give us uh, elaborate explanation of what preceded it, the material that just preceded it, but um, the sentence would still make sense. So, even if you remove this uh, parenthetic material, you will find it does not really make much of a difference. Yes, it does in a se sense in a way that uh, we get more explanation here. So, it is a good elaboration. However, we use parenthesis to mark off material that we may not really, uh, we can actually do away with. So, the wristwatch landscape is increasingly populated by big brands that are often independent of a large multinational groups. Now look at it, so many things happening here, okay, variety of verbs and all depend on uh, uh, the wristwatch landscape. That is the main clause here, uh, that can be one of the main clauses here and independently owned companies which can compete on an international level with the big boys are becoming more and more rare. Independently owned companies which can, so again you find that the very structure of the sentence is such that it is complex. There is no room for any simplicity here. So, it is not a simple sentence and definitely not a compound sentence. Try to break it, but it will be very hard. Now, uh, we will talk more about clauses in detail in today's class. I will be talking a little uh, about relative clause in particular, because that is something that you often need, most of us need in our day to day speech and in our writings, uh, a good understanding of relative clause. But before that, uh, let us move on to discuss something else that is phrase. So, after words uh, uh, that are the basic units of a sentence, you get phrase. Phrase may not have a verb of its own, rarely, but phrase does not contain a verb of its own and uh, it is completely dependent. Uh, on the main clause okay, in order to make some sense. Otherwise, it just remains a group of words. So, what is phrase? Phrase is generally a group of words that make a unit. A phrase within a sentence has a specific function. Now, uh, consider a sentence like a wire is made of platinum. A wire is made of platinum. A wire is made of silver also, but uh, let us talk about a platinum wire. Now, this is of course, your auxiliary made. Okay, so, you have the verb here. So, you have the verb phrase and this is your noun phrase and this is your preposition phrase. So, these are the way you analyze phrases. If you look at it, uh, if you look at another sentence, a balloon is filled with gas. A balloon is your noun phrase, is filled is your verb phrase, two verbs happening and uh, with gas becomes your prepositional phrase. Why? Because you have with there and why is this a prepositional phrase? Because it has off here. If you break it further, then you get one preposition and one noun. Let us talk about two noun phrases. Let us have a sentence like the boy pigged the puppy. The boy pigged the puppy. So, the boy is your noun phrase, pigged is your main verb, the puppy is again your noun phrase. So, that is a phrase. Independently, they just remain words or a unit. Now, uh, we have been talking about clauses and we talked about clauses particularly in relation 
with compound and complex sentences. Now, there are three kinds of clauses. One is a very important clause, relative clause. These usually follow nouns and affect their meanings in an adjective like way, therefore relative. Hmm? They are introduced by relative pronouns such as who or which, who or which that are the main, but sometimes we use that also of course. Adverbial clauses, second clauses are those clauses that like adverbs influence the verb, they qualify the verb, walk fast, eat fast, mm, sleep well, well is an adverb. So, they define the quality of the verb, work quietly, read quietly, do not make noise. Most of these L Y ending are adverbs. So, these are uh, uh, so um, again adverbial phrase clauses what are they? They influence the verb. Some clauses exist without full verbs. Now, a sentence like while making or sorry while walking on the road, we were startled by the horn while walking on the road. So, here is a clause, we were startled by the horn. Now, um, while walking on the road, it is walking is a verb, but here it is not a full verb. What is the full verb? We were startled by the horn. So, you have adver uh, we ha you have clauses like these also. Uh, let me give you another sentence, there was uh, the professor sitting at his desk and arguing over the phone. So, you have verbs sitting, arguing, okay. but there was the professor, was is the main verb and uh, these verbs are like uh, uh, more non-finite kind of verbs, which we will talk about later. Let us look at this particular passage here and look at the number of clauses, look at the kinds of clauses that are existing. When talking about fans today, we usually refer to the exquisite folding fan, which is said to be introduced to China from Japan during the late Song dynasty. It is rumored that the Japanese invented the folding fan after being inspired by bats wings. As this fan could be easily folded and carried, it soon came into fashion. Compared to other types of fans, the holding fans more are a more like a piece of handicraft. The ribs of folding fans were made from valuable materials such as hawks bill turtle, ox horn, ebony, mortal bamboo, elephant trunk and jadeite carved into different shapes. For example, a grasshopper's legs and the different sizes of folding fans are classified by the numbers of ribs the fan has usually 7, 9, 12, 14, 16 or 18. Look at the number of clauses, it has a huge and a wide variety. Now, coming back to relative clause, a relative clause as we have already talked about this functions like, uh, it functions like an adjecti adjective and it gives more information of, about someone or something referred to in a main clause. Give me, let me give you an example, a disease that is caused by a virus is difficult to diagnose. A disease that is caused by a virus is difficult to diagnose. So, it gives you a little more information about the disease, disease that is caused by a virus. A wire which is made of platinum is very expensive. A wire which is made of platinum is very expensive, little bit more information about the wire. I have given, uh, I have done some examples for you. Please read this slide. Look at these sentences here. A plane which is 500 seated is currently not ready for flight. The theory that there is life on Mars is an interesting one. A balloon 
that is filled with gas can rise off the ground. He showed me the pearls which he brought from Canada. Which pearls? Those pearls which he brought from Canada. Okay. Now, relative clauses and I am giving you this exercise. Please look at the slide. Join the two sentences using who and which. A mug is dropped on a floor, it breaks into several pieces. A mug which is dropped on a floor breaks into several pieces. Some, inven some inventions defined the 1920s, they are all about entertainment and uh, convenience. Some inventions which defined or that defined the 20s are all about entertainment and convenience, you will have to rem remove they. Okay? So, referencing is good referencing is also a part of good writing. And the internet is a network of computers, it covers the entire planet allowing people to access all that. So, how do we join? The, in the internet which is a network of computers covers the entire planet allowing people to access any piece of information they desire from all corners of the world. The computer and I will solve it for you, which is a complex machine has the ability to store vast collections of information. Now, look at these sentences and try to do them on, a, on your own. I will read that out. There are refrigeration trucks, they have changed our habit, uh, eating habits as we now have easy access to fresh fo foods even in the hottest and dry summer months. William Shakespeare was born in Stratford upon Avon in 1564. He is considered to be the greatest writer in the English language, right? William Shakespeare, who was born in Stratford upon Avon in, in 1564, is considered to be the greatest writer in the English language. Last one, Charles Darwin was an English natural scientist. He laid down a framework for the theory of evolution showing how man evolved from lower life forms. How do we do it? Charles Darwin, who was an English natural scientist, laid down a framework for the theory of evolution, showing how man evolved from lower life forms. Next slide, please look at it. Confucius was a wise sage, who sought to educate his fellow citizens on the ancient wisdom of moral precepts. Paul Lotherber and Peter Mansfields have invented magnetic resonance imaging, which has transformed almost every area of surgery, allowing doctors to see inside a patient's body without cutting it open first. So, that is relative clauses for you using who and which and that. Take a look at this particular passage. I would like you to identify the relative clause. The event that caused America to take a vow against participating in any war ever, the great depression of the early 20th century was a crunch so bad, a loaf of bre bread in Germany cost some 12,000 euros at one point of time. Needless to say, there were many deaths, mostly suicides and many nations on the verge of bankruptcy, an event which caused families to go without food for many days, the great depression. Look at the last sentence, very good example of a higher order kind of writing. You see this, uh, the main clause, uh, sorry, the main noun phrase comes at the fag end of the sentence, an event which caused and this is your relative clause. Okay. Um, now, uh, from here let me do some reading, reading passage for you before we wind up. So, uh, let us look at this passage and this passage will be followed by some very simple comprehension exercises. When you identify a salinity problem during the growing season, it is recommended to flush the field 
even if it means risking some crop damage rather than allowing further deterioration of the crop due to salinity. Flushing applications should be carefully planned according to the crop conditions and growth stage. In light soils which drain easily the impact of flushing on the crop is usually insignificant. Please read the next slide. In heavy soils water infiltration and drainage problems may be encountered resulting in excess of water and lack of air to the roots. Flushing heavy soils is a prolonged process and its final result is difficult to anticipate in advance. Therefore, extra care should be taken when growing on heavy soils as to not reach salinity buildup at all or at least identify the problem early enough when uh, salts levels are still relatively easy to flush. If all else fails and flushing is the chosen course of action in heavier salts not more than the maxi maximal water amount that can be absorbed by the soil should be applied and the longest interval possible should be maintained. In the meantime fertilization should be based only on nitrogen and only the minimum amount should be applied. The water used for flushing should be the highest quality possible because the purpose of the flushing process is to decrease the soil salinity to the levels of the irrigation water. Please look at these questions. First question, what does the writer suggest doing on first spotting salinity during the growing season? Second, what is the effect of water infiltration and drainage problems in heavy soils? Third question, why does the writer say that the water used for flushing should be of the highest quality? And also fill in the blanks, dash applications should be carefully planned according to the crop conditions and growth stage. Fertili fertilization should be based only on dash. So, please read the passage and try to solve the exercises given below. So, thank you very much and before winding up let me tell you that uh, uh, after the end of each module there will be assignments and you are supposed to and you are expected to submit the assignments online. Okay. So, thank you very much.